Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we'll be adding some more AMD X570 motherboard VRM thermal data to the 15 boards that we've already tested. Now, for this update, we'll be mostly looking at the $250 to $300 price range, and we'll also be getting our first ever look at MSI's new X570 Unify motherboard. In fact, I'm told we have a world exclusive on this board, not really sure how that came to be, especially after our recent MSI coverage, but good on them for not blacklisting us. Anyway, before we check out the Unify in more detail, today's video is sponsored by Corsair in the new Hydro X series. If you're keen to get into custom liquid cooling, but you don't know where to start, check out their custom cooling configurator. And this is a useful tool for even experienced builders. The interactive and intuitive configurator allows you to visualize how the end product will look, and most important of all, allow you to quickly and easily work out all the cooling bits you'll need to make your ultimate gaming PC. For more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so I've now tested every single MSI X570 motherboard, and I found that the X570A Pro, the X570 Gaming Plus, and the X570 Gaming Edge all ran at unacceptably high temperatures with the Ryzen 9 3900X. The godlike worked well, but it's stupidly expensive. The Ace was decent and so was the Creation. Both those boards pack a 12-phase V-Core VRM using a dozen IR 60-amp power stages. The last MSI board to check off my list was the X570 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi, but MSI has been really slow to serve this board up, and in fact, they never did. I ended up having to purchase it last minute, and it's not cheap in the land down under, so that did sting a little bit, but thanks to our Patreon members, we can afford to buy boards such as this. Originally, the plan was to finish covering the mid-range to high-end X570 motherboards, which included not only the MSI Pro Carbon, but also the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra, the ASUS ROG Strix X570e Gaming, ASRock X570 Extreme 4, Gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, and the ASUS Prime X570 Pro. And that's largely still the plan. But in addition to all that, we now have MSI's X570 Unify thrown into the mix. So you might be wondering, what's the deal with the Unify? I was a little surprised when MSI told me they had a new X570 board coming, but now that I've tested the Pro Carbon, it kind of all makes sense. Basically, the Pro Carbon, like the X570A Pro, X570 Gaming Plus, and X570 Gaming Edge, it kind of sucks. Sorry, MSI, I know you don't want me to say that, but Damn, you guys really messed up the VRM on these boards. Without the Unity, MSI wouldn't have a single X570 motherboard south of $350 US worth buying. Basically, that means anything short of the Ace should be avoided. So this is where the Unify comes in. At $300 US, you get the exact same 12-phase VRM found on the Ace and Creation. So that's great news. In fact, the Unify is said to run even cooler than the Ace due to a much larger heatsink. So let's take a quick look around the board. Whereas the Ace features a plastic I.O. cover that encases quite a bit of the VRM heatsink, the I.O. cover on the Unify is part of the VRM heatsink. Basically, MSI has listened to us on this one and got rid of the bloody plastic. They've also gotten rid of the gold highlights, which I didn't particularly like either, replacing them with what is, in my opinion, much more tasteful silver trimmings. Oh, and there's no RGB lighting at all. The only other noteworthy changes is the removal of the Intel Gigabit LAN. The Unify is limited to Realtek's 2.5 Gigabit LAN controller. And that's about the extent of the changes. This is essentially the Ace with a better heatsink, no RGB lighting, and a single wired network port. And for that, you save at least $50 US. So at $300 US, the Unify slots in between MSI's own Ace and Pro Carbon, and that places it in direct competition with the ASRock Taichi, Gigabyte Aorus Ultra, and ASUS ROG Strix X570F Gaming, which sadly I don't have that ASUS board, but it sports the exact same VRM as the TUF, and we have tested that board. So we have a pretty good idea of how the F Gaming should perform. Anyway, at this point, I think we might as well just get on with it. For load testing, we're running Blender for an hour, and all testing has been conducted on an open air test bench with no direct airflow. Now, normally I also test inside a case, but it is massively time consuming to test two different configurations, especially the case configuration, because I have to install all these motherboards in the case and do all that sort of stuff. And basically I'm saving all that hard work for when the 3950X eventually lands. I was hoping to 
have started on all that by now, but yeah, you guys know what happened there. Anyway, to record the temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'm reporting the peak MOSFET and PCB temperature. Finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient. Instead, I maintain a room temperature of between 21 and 22 degrees, and I have a thermocouple sitting next to the test system monitoring the room temperature at all times. Okay, so first up we have the PBO plus auto OC thermal results. This is an out of the box type test really with auto voltage settings. The MSI Unify peaked at just 60 degrees, making it one of the best boards we've tested and four degrees cooler than the Ace. It comfortably beat the ASRock Tai Chi. It was four degrees cooler than the Ultra, but it ran a degree hotter than the Strix E Gaming. The ASUS board does cost around $20 more, so a pretty solid result from MSI here. What's not good for MSI is the 94 degrees reached by the Pro Carbon. For a $260 US motherboard, that's an absolutely horrible result. Basically, you'll get better VRAM performance with entry-level ASUS, ASRock, and Gigabyte boards. But it gets even worse for the X570 Pro Carbon. The board completely failed our 4.3 GHz overclock, throttling the CPU just 10 minutes into the render test. And this is the same behavior we saw with the X570A Pro and Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. That said, whereas the entry-level X570A Pro didn't throttle until the board sensor read 115 degrees, the much higher-end X570 Pro Carbon throttled the CPU upon reaching 100 degrees, and it did this much quicker than the cheaper A Pro. So while it appears to have run cooler than the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X, it failed this test, whereas the budget Gigabyte board didn't. Thankfully though, MSI's new Unify is a massive improvement, peaking at just 65 degrees, making it two degrees cooler than the Ace. Under this extreme load test, the Unify was also seven degrees cooler than the Strix E Gaming and Tai Chi, and then nine degrees cooler than the Aorus Ultra, making it best in class. Okay, so that was a bit of a mixed bag from MSI, but let's start with the good. The X570 Unify is a welcomed addition to the X570 lineup. It offers the best performing VRM of any motherboard at the $300 price point. It's also loaded with features. And in fact, I'd say it's so feature rich that it kind of makes the higher end X570 boards such as MSI's own Ace a bit pointless. But anyway, the good news is the Unify rocks. The complete lack of RGB lighting and plastic bits is so nice to see. And those big old heat sinks work well though I certainly wouldn't mind if they were real finned heat sinks, but the board works well enough as it is, and naturally with some airflow will run even cooler. The bad news is the X570 Pro Carbon is significantly worse than I ever imagined it could be. Failing to pass our 4.3 gigahertz overclock is a shocking result, and frankly at $260 US, this is completely unacceptable. Even if you were to blast this thing with cool air, it's still gonna run much hotter than competing boards and good luck avoiding throttling with the upcoming 3950X. MSI really needs to go back to the drawing board and even replace everything below the Unify in their X570 product stack. And we know they're capable of making great motherboards, so it's a real shame to see boards such as the X570A Pro, Gaming Plus, Gaming Edge, and now the Pro Carbon damaging their reputation. And when it comes to VRM thermal performance, we're not even looking for the absolute best result. That's really just bragging rights. Really what we're looking for here is a pass. Can the board handle the 3900X in the most extreme conditions? Because in order to feature a flagship chipset, it really ought to. Basically, the VRM thermal testing helps narrow the search for a new motherboard. Boards like the Pro Carbon, for example, can be quickly scratched off your list. But getting back to the Unify, for those of you wanting to buy this board, you'll be able to do so on October 18th, and the rest of the world's tech media should start to get their review samples around the 14th. So expect a detailed motherboard reviews soon. As for competing boards from ASUS, ASRock, and Gigabyte, they're all very solid. The ASRock X570 Tai Chi has proven itself a number of times now. Uh, the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra is also a good choice. And the slightly pricey ASUS ROG Strix X570 E Gaming is also very solid. So it really comes down to which board offers the features that you'll need, though they all appear to be quite similar in that regard. And that's gonna do it for this one. Sorry I didn't break down all the boards one by one like I normally do for this VRM content. We were just adding too many boards really. These videos are quite long as it is, so going over each board individually would have blown this video out to like half an hour or whatever. And I know most of you just wanna see the temperature results, which is why I jumped into those quite quickly, quicker than I normally do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to let me know what you make of the new MSI Unify. Really interested to hear you or hear your thoughts on that one. I think it's a pretty cool board. Great offering at $300. As I said, I'd love to see MSI get a bit more competitive in the lower end 
uh, market segment, but the X570 chipset is meant to be about, well, higher end motherboards. And I think $300 is reasonable when you've got 12 and 16 core CPUs. Anyway, that's a, enough about that one. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can like, subscribe, follow us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams. And yeah, just thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.